I will now show you another example here that uh, will highlight why we also need to do, uh, you know, we need to study what is known as Boolean simplification that is going to be discussed in the next um, video, right? So, let us look at an, another example here. I have an input gate, okay? I'll just take a simple AND gate, A1, okay? Uh, I'll tell you what the other input is, okay? A2, A3 and so on, okay, and let's say this is A, A10, okay, or let me go back on my, you know, my earlier sermon where I said we must get used to number, uh, you know, indexing starting from 0, A1, A2, A9, okay, or I will even make it A19. So, that there are 20 inputs, right? So, 2 power 20 is what? 1024 into 1024. Uh, so, we are talking about a million inputs already, okay? Uh, so, now I have therefore 20 outputs y0, y1, y2, y19. And what is the other input? Let us say the other input is a common input to all the gates. Okay, I don't have a dot anywhere on this other line. So, this one, let's say typically is a reset, uh, reset, is a reset signal. Okay, uh, so let's say for example, the reset, if it is 0, right, then I want all the outputs to go low. Okay, so if if I were to you know try to uh, define a truth table for this, right? What would you do, right? Just like in the previous case, so you take this guy here, which is the black box, it's a black box, okay, and now I have a0, a1, a2, all the way to a19. Okay, 20 inputs and 20 outputs, y0, y1, y2, all the way to y19, right? Now, if I were to do exactly the same exercise that I did in the previous example, right? What would I do? I would simply go and say, I'll go from 0, 0, 0, all zeros, 0, 0, 0, only a19, 1, then 0, 0, all 1, 0, 2, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? This will be in, um, uh, uh, you know, combination number 1 and all the way to 2 power 20, right? The, the 1 millionth combination is all 1s. And then what will I do? For each of these combinations, I will have to propagate the truth table, figure out what the output is, right? And by the way, I forgot, I also have a, uh, okay, I will alter this slightly uh, so that I, I keep the other thing same. I will make this as A18. There are 19 inputs plus the 20th input is my reset. Okay, so I am going to make it A18 and then reset. Uh, so, I have this and then I have 0. Uh, 0, 1, all the way to 1, okay? This is my 2 power 20th combination here, right? So, if I were to do exactly what I did in the previous example, I would take combination A0, A1, A2, all zeros, propagate it through the AND gate. I know that if any one input to e any AND gate happens to be 0, the output will be 0, right? So, therefore, all zeros, right? Likewise, then I will take, you know, all zeros reset equal to 1 and then I will again find this output is all zeros, okay? Now, intuitively, right, when I actually try to find out, you know, okay, what is the, what is the dependence of y naught on all the inputs, right? The truth table actually does not tell me that 
y0 is dependent only on a0 and reset. For example, if you look at the circuit on the left hand side here, it is obvious that the gate g0, g1, g2, right, g, um, and okay, this also by the way has to be 18 because I have only 19, yeah, okay, small correction there, okay, and this is therefore g18, right. So, if I look at the output y0, it actually depends only on A0 and reset. It does not depend on A1, A2 all the way to A18. So, any change in A1 to A18 should not affect Y0, right? So, in some sense, Y0 does not care for what the inputs A1 to A, A1, A2 all the way to A18 are. It only depends on A0 and reset. Okay, but if I look at, if I just look at the output y here, right, for 2 power 20 combinations, I will only see 1s and zeros, right, there is a 1 here, there is a 0 here, all many zeros. So, how do I figure out if, you know, that this, this piece of information, that y0 is dependent only on a0 and it is not dependent on a1, a2, a3 and so on right so this is where we need to think of an alternate representation of the same information that we have in the truth table right for example if you look at a truth table right it's it's very analogous to actually building what is known as a lookup table in mathematics so let's say i have a function y equal to f of x and x can take only integers uh, let me say 0, 1, 2 and some n integers, right. So, one thing you can do is you define for every value, okay, of the integers. You know that you have only finite number of integers, x, 0, 1, 2, all the way to n, right, n plus 1 values. You define the value y. Okay, this is, this could be something. For example, let us consider the case where I am just squaring the number. Okay, then, then this case will be 0, 1, 4, 9, all the way to n square. Right? Now, this is possible here because we have finite number of values. Right? And so is the case in our Boolean functions because we have, uh, you know, though we have multi variable values, we are talking about only two values per input and therefore or two values per variable and therefore we are able to cover all possible exhaustive combinations with two power n combinations, right. However, a more clever way of representing this would simply say y equal to x square, right. y equal to x square because this allows me to do what is known as algebraic man manipulations. Right. So, next if I want to take x square and then feed it, right. So, for example, if I take x, feed it to f1 of x, right, and then I feed it to f2 of x, right. So, let us say this is f1 of x is just x squared, f2 of x is e power x. Then we know that the input here, the output of f1 of x is going to be x squared and the output of e power x because x squared is the input is going to be e power x square. So, essentially given an input, we will be able to figure out what the output is, right. Now, if I now feed this to a third function f3 of x, okay, which is basically ln of x, right. So, you get x squared here, uh, let me write that in red, you get x square you get e power x square and then you get you take ln of that and therefore you get x square back here. So, what this does is without having to go through all this truth table evaluation and all that, you are able to essentially evaluate and algebraically get this output here as a function of this without having to go through exhaustive combinations, right. So, the next topic that we will be discussing is exactly this idea borrowed into Boolean logic and therefore the 
we will be discussing the ideas of boolean algebra in great detail right and not only that we will discuss the idea of boolean algebra and we will also discuss the idea of uh, boolean simplification right which basically use the idea of boolean algebra in order to uh, simplify these expressions so for example here what i was talking about right you know if i take this y0 truth table and then you know find some expression for it i will not only be able to find an expression in terms of a0 a1 a2 all the way to a18 and reset i'll also be able to simplify it and figure out that y0 depends only on a0 it does not depend on a1 at all or a2 a3 for that matter right so this information of ones and zeros that resides in this truth table we will be able to simplify and infer this particular information that the output is dependent only on a subset of inputs okay likewise if you look at uh, this particular case here right i said that uh, uh, invert a give it to nand gate you know invert b give it to the other input of the nand gate it's like an or gate right and this is true for n inputs this again can be verified without having to go through the entire truth table of two power n combinations right we can show this algebraically and also demonstrate through laws of boolean algebra that this must be true right so just like in mathematics we don't have to exhaustively show for every single value especially you know when you took this y equal to f of x here we got away because this is integer values right but what if they were real numbers then i cannot even enumerate the you know the uh, set of real numbers and therefore i have no choice but to define this algebraic expression here and actually manipulate the algebra right so in mathematics it's an obvious uh, uh, it's an obvious uh, uh, it's an obvious fact that is dictated to us you have no choice but in boolean algebra many times you can get away with truth table and uh, uh, get quite far with them but beyond the point you do need boolean algebra and boolean simplification which will be the focus of the coming lecture thank you Thank you.